What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we're back with Pro Cycling Manager 2021 and finally today we are getting our career mode underway. It's been a little while trying to set everything up and get everything perfect so we are ready to go and I cannot wait to show you guys who we are running with. So without further ado, let's take a look at our team. In the world of cycling, Norway have always been the nation that punch well above their weights. Knut Knudsen won Torreno Adriasco in the 1970s as well as multiple Giro d'Italia stages. Tor Hussoft became world champion in 2010 whilst winning multiple Tour de France stages, whilst Edval Bosenhagen and Alexander Kristoff have carried the torch more recently. Uno X pro cycling team are now taking Norwegian cycling to a whole new level. Uno X took over lead sponsorship of the team in 2017 and they have risen rapidly to pro team level since, which is just below World Tour. The team are heavily focused on developing Norwegian and Danish riders so they can go on to World Tour level. Tobias Voss and Andreas Lettnesen are recent graduates who are already impressing in some of the biggest races in the world. Foss finished in the top 10 of the 2021 Giro d'Italia. However, as the team's ambitions grow and results have improved, World Tour could soon be a part of their own story. And this is where our story begins. There we have it then, guys. We are taking over Uno X pro cycling team, a Norwegian team with some Danish riders as well. And that's the way it is going to stay throughout this series. We are not signing any riders from any other nations whatsoever. We are only signing Norwegians or Danish riders and trying to create the most powerful best team in cycling that way. So it's going to be a challenge and I cannot wait for it. So we won't be doing a custom team like last year, but I do feel this is more of a challenge than the T-Mobile Bianchi series from PCM20. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it nonetheless, despite it not being a custom team. And I think really it adds to the series as well in a little way being a real team that's fighting in real life as well, so we can watch how the real team unfold compared to us as well. So I think the best way to start is by taking a look at our star riders and our squad in general. So you can see our highest rated rider is 74, and we do have a fairly big squad actually, 25 riders, considering we are a Conti pro team. We are not World Tour, and we are not Conti, but we're kind of in between a pro team, if you will. Um, to give it the proper term. But anyway, Marcus Tullegaard is officially our best rider, 26 years old, and he is a cobble specialist, but pretty much an all-rounder. Really excited to have this guy. And I think in real life, Tullegaard did a really good performance at Omni Pet Newsblad this season, so maybe we can try and reproduce that in-game. His brother, Daniel Hulagard is here as well. He's had a spell at Groupama FDJ in his career. He's more of a pure sprinter. Had a few down years though, um, but yeah, we'll see if we can maybe refine his best form. And talking about sprinters, Christopher Halvorsen, another rider who has stepped down from World Tour recently. He was with EF, I believe. Now he's come back to Uno X. 76 acceleration, 74 sprint. He is by far our best sprinter on paper. And yeah, he's our lead sprinter. What can I say? 24 years old, so there's some room still to develop with this man, and hopefully we can really push on and make him, I'm not going to say best sprinter in the world, but you know, in that conversation of leading sprinters, maybe one day. Yet another rider who stepped down from World Tour is Rasmus Tiller. He was at NTT, I think, and he's really a barrazer, an attacker. He's a good puncher, good sprinter as well, fairly good on the cobbles, so really well-rounded, good on the prologues as well. So he's a really good rider, still just 24 years old, and you will notice that is a real theme with this team. They are so young, so many talented riders throughout. But yeah, Rasmus Tiller won Trobro Leon this season. So uh, yeah, he's starting a pig farm pretty soon. We're not going to be playing farm simulator this year though. Captain Price Peterson, YouTube pro cycling legend. He's part of our team, 21 years old, really talented talented young time trialist and if I take a look here you can see we have five really good time trialers all with 70 or above so this is really a strong aspect of our team Nicholas Larson who's really good all rounder decent sprinter very good on the time trial bike as well and I will get a lot of pronunciations wrong in this series to start with at least but Soren Werenskold I'm going to go with a really talented rider you can see 20 years old good on the time trial bike very good sprinter, capable on the cobbles as well. And this could really be one of our gems of the team for sure. Adding to that though, Julius Johansson, another 21 year old good on the time trial bike. Same goes for Morton Hulgaard as well. So 
I mean, we have a lot of very good Baradurs you can instantly see. Very good time trialists, but look at our flat stack, guys. We have so many good riders for kind of the Belgium classics and just the cobble classics in general because of this flat stack. We are so strong in that aspect. You can see in the sprinter department as well, lots of capable sprinters, although it is Hal Vorsen who really is our leader in that role. However, there is a clear weakness in the squad right now, and that is in the climbing department. We have one rider over 70 in Mountain, and then no one really close to him even. So Mountain, Torsten Train is our only rider there, really. Marcus Hulagard is a fairly good climber. We have some others who could develop into a decent climber. I can see Jakob Hinskul Madsen right here. He's a fairly good puncher, again, 20 years old. Lots of room to develop, like pretty much everyone in this team. He could maybe one day be a decent climber, but not quite just yet. So yeah. We're really going to struggle in the mountain stages is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, it's going to take us a little while to get really accustomed with the squad, but we will do as time progresses through the series, of course. But hopefully that's a fairly good overview. One more rider I definitely want to point out is Jonas Eversby Widerberg, a really solid rider, 21 years old. He's actually the under-23 European champion. You can see him in the jersey in that photo right there. And I've actually got a message from him right now. Hi. Jonas Wiedeberg here, and I hope you enjoy watching the Unix Pro Cycling playthrough. Good luck with the series, Joe. So I think you'll all agree that instantly makes Jonas Wiedeberg the MVP of the series already, and we're going to watch this man, watch him become one of the best all-round cyclists in the world, I hope. So the next thing I want to do is actually show you guys the development team, because we do have a development team, and they are very strong indeed, some very exciting prospects right here. To start, we do have the Hannison twins. We have Tobias and Anders, and some of you guys may have heard of these guys if you've been watching the under 23 Giro in real life. Tobias, he was second in the GC, only behind the very talented Juan Ayuso. We also have Anton Sharmig as well. I think he attacked at the Tour of Turkey earlier this season and looked pretty good there. So these three riders in particular, the Hansons and Sharmig as well, they are definitely going to be a part of our team sooner rather than later because, as you see, they're already some of our better climbers. We will have to re-sign some of these riders for sure next season. We have some very talented guys leaving at the moment. Marcus Hulagard in particular, our best rider, doesn't have a contract for 2022 just yet. And I also wanted to show you guys the trainer situation. I have tried to set this up as best as possible. Um, I have signed a new coach as well. So we have three coaches and I have assigned the axes of training to what I think should be pretty appropriate for each rider as well. I have also set up a training camp. You can see me doing it right here. I've sent all the guys to, I think, a three-star training camp in Italy just to get the fitness up ahead of the season. Always good to do at the start of the year. Next up then, I do want to show you guys the calendar and you may have noticed already that we are on the 5th of January right now. So not quite the start of the game. I have played a little before recording this and and I've tried to set up the calendar as best I can. Didn't really want to go to Australia. And I applied for quite a lot of races, actually. I tried to get an invite to the Mallorcan Classics, for example. They declined all of those. And there were quite a lot of kind of HC one category races as well that we were to climb from, which surprised me a lot. I thought we'd probably get most of the uh, the wild cards that I tried to get, particularly in the dot one category races, which yeah, surprised me a lot. But this is our current calendar. We will be starting today's episode at the Vuelta a San Juan. We have the GP Marseille as well, so pretty action packed first episode right here. But you can see we go to the Saudi Tour, Tour of Colombia, uh, Tour de Holvar as well, Omloop Het Nieuwsblad, and we're going to a lot of the big Belgian classics. It would seem to start the season but a lot of the World Tour races, I didn't really apply for a lot of them, but I have tried to see and, and kind of push my luck a little bit, try to get as many wild cards as we possibly can. So I'm not sure if we'll be going to RVV, for example, Amstel, La Fleche, LBL, not sure. I did apply to the Giro and La Vuelta Espana, not the Tour de France, but I tried to see if we could sneak our way into getting a wild card for a Grand Tour. I doubt we will though. And so off camera, if we take a look at the planner, I have tried to plan out the first few months of the season. Haven't really gone too far beyond March, as you'll see if we take a look further along, but I have assigned the objectives and really the riders I want to take to each race for the first few weeks. So that is all set up. And I have tried the new objective system. I do really quite like it, I must say. And as I said, I've removed all the objectives. We're starting clean and I've only really assigned the early season objectives and I can add some at any time throughout the year, which hopefully 
Should be a good way of doing it, I'm not sure. We'll see, we'll give it a go. And just to illustrate how many races we were to climb from, I can show you here. This was my first go. And for example, the Tour of the Alps. I know Unirex were there recently in real life. We were declined right here, Brabant's Appeal. Uh, Valenciana as well. Lots of races we just had no chance of going to. I'll show you guys the sponsor screen as well. We do have some pretty achievable sponsor objectives as far as I can see. They want really us to get a good result in the Norway and Danish national championships. Makes sense for sure as well as a stage win at the Arctic Race of Norway. That is our three main goals throughout the year. Also a top five on loop. That is going to be a lot more challenging and hopefully Marcus Hulgaard is going to be the man to do that. I have had a very quick Quick look at the riders that could be available to us. Remember, only Norway, only Denmark. I would love to bring Alex Kristoff to this team to really be a sprinter and then a road captain as he heads towards his late 30s. That would be awesome for me. But if you guys have any suggestions for riders we can bring to the team from these two nations, remember, definitely let me know in the comments of this video or any future video. So I'm looking through some of the wild cards right now. Six teams have applied to get a place at Paris-Roubaix. How awesome would it be if we can ride Roubaix? here in this first season. Only four teams applied to the tour, surprising to me. I don't think we'd have got in anyway. Uh, but yeah, we are applying to a few. I'll let you guys know which ones we get into. Rob Stannard is the champion of Australia, but I do want to take a look at if we are going to Strada Bianca. Let's take a look. And I don't think we're going to get in. Man, six invitations and we don't get in. I think we're the only team who applied who don't get into the race. That is a, uh, a bit of a kick in the teeth, I must say. More wild cards are in. Are we going to Paris-Roubaix? No, we are not. La Flesh. We are going to La Flesh. Okay, that is something at least. Bit of a shame about Roubaix. Again, quite a few teams going. We're not one of them. We're obviously not going to the Tour. We're not going to the Dauphiné. We do make it into Liège, Bastogne Liège. Okay, this is really interesting. So we've made it into the two Arden Classics. I like that a lot. So already we have a trainer coming to us saying they're not happy working with a rider. I'm going to do this mostly off camera throughout uh, throughout the save, but I'll show you this one obviously. So now Hal Vorsen is going to go to groundbreaking to suit his rider style. The preseason training camp is complete in Alcamo. Let's see uh, what has happened. So all of our guys' fitness just increased a little. Big moment again with the wildcards. Do we get San Remo, Giro or Torreno? Let's see, Torreno. No. Giro? No. Milan San Remo? No. Brilliant. Love you, Italy. I also absolutely love how Yolo Cometa haven't got a spot at the Giro, but they do at Torreno. That has to be because of some highly erratic play by a PCM YouTuber that I will not name right now. And we will also be going to the Amstel Gold Race as well as La Flesh and Liège. So the three big Arden classics on our calendar. Quick notes as well, I will be playing this entire series on times 1.1 difficulty, so a little harder than at stream. And I will make a video tomorrow showing you guys how you can do that. We're not even a month into the season yet. Mark Cavendish is already winning races, things you absolutely love to see. So guys, the start list at the Vuelta San Juan, I must say, does seem to be so poor to the point it seems glitched. I've played four stages, we've won three of them and we're winning the race overall as well. So to Today we're just going to play Marseille on camera. I'll play San Juan off camera because like I said, it just seems like a really terrible race. We have arrived then at the Grand Prix at Marseille for our first race of the season. And I can already see Matthew Vanderpool and Julian Alaphilippe are among the favorites. So a nice easy start to things for us today. But Rasmus Tiller really is our leader. You can see the rest of our team as well. Abrahamson, Russell, Torsten Selene as well, a fairly good puncher. Jonas Widerberg as well starts alongside Jakob Hinskel Madsen. Away we go in Marseille then guys. And I think the best way to start the series is trying to go in the breakaway, try and be offensive as Unorex have been all season in real life. So Abrahamson comes to the front and he will attack our first attack of the series, the first of many. So after a couple of attempts, the breakaway have now formed. We do have 10 riders, two minutes up the road. Pedrero is here, Bernard as well. So we're in pretty good company right now. Abrahamson though on a really good day and hopefully we can perform here. So we have a quick race right now. The tempo is high, but still we have have 90 seconds in the breakaway. Abrahamson looking pretty good in this group and he could even become our leader because he was sent up the road earlier. The only issue is he can't really sprint if there is a group coming to the line. Now descending then 70k still to go and we only have about 70 seconds as well to the main group. They are chasing very hard right now. Abrahamson and the breakaway don't really have a chance of holding out for the win. 
but he can definitely drop back and act as a satellite rider later on in the stage. And we're quite lucky that Ina Rubio and Antonio Tiberi are on the breakaway to support their teammates Bernard and Pedrero because they're doing a lot of the work right now. So coming to a little climb right now, let's push it a little with Abrahamson. Really try and make this race quite difficult up front because the peloton are now within a minute. We're just staying in position. We're not going to attack just yet. And as I say that, Mikel Honore on the move for the Koenig quick set. Very clever move to G as well. And now we definitely need to stay right to the front of this race. And Rasmus Tiller alongside Matthew Van Der Poel in the perfect position, it must be said. Honore trying to bridge to that breakaway. He hasn't managed to do it though on the climb and we're still ahead. And we now have attacks coming out of the breakaway. Julian Bernard trying to make a move. And I think this is the moment that everyone is going to be brought back in. Not quite. And there we go. There we go. Tiller is blocked in a little. And look at that move. Matthew Vanspool showing off his acceleration right there. And Abrahamson could even be our leader at this stage because Tiller was caught so far back right there and really blocked off a little. However, we have managed to pull back in Matthew Vanspool right there. Rasmus Tiller is right to the front and he is going to try and stay on Matthew Vanspool's wheel. Abrahamson has been caught and he can look after Tiller briefly if he can. So at this point, we have only 54 riders at the front of the race. Cataneo, he's trying to really make this difficult. And now here we go, Matthew Vanspool on the attack again. Look at that acceleration show by the Dutchman. I simply cannot follow straight away. We'll try and keep Tiller though towards the front and try and reel him in slowly as now Thibaut Pino on the counter-attack for Group Arma FDJ. Things you absolutely love to see. But now Tiller is almost alone because Garseth is pretty much done and I think we may as well try this right now. Rasmus Tiller is going to go on the attack. Try to join Matthew Vanspool at the front of the race as well as Piniam Gamay and he has done it. Joined by Giulio Ciccone only. And now we have the likes of Pino, Gasper, Colbrelli and Julian Alaphilippe, the world champion, is caught behind. We are relaying with Matthew Vanderpool in our first race. What is going on right now? So we just need to stay in the wheels as Giulio Giacone is getting drops. Binium Gamay as well on supreme form right now. We'll continue working with these guys and I think it will be Vanderpool, Tilla and Binium Gamay Going to the line in Marseille at the front of the race. How has this happened? What a start to the career right now. So you know what? 5k to go. I am going to try it. One little attack right now with Rasmus Tiller. But we're not going to get away. We're not going to get away. That is maybe stupid. Let's focus on the sprints. We're a decent sprinter. Vanspool and Gamay. It's going to be difficult to beat those guys. We're going to give it our best though. So 3k to go. I am in the wheel of Binium Gamay. We'll switch to Matthew Vanspool's wheel. We have 30 seconds. 2k to go to the line. This has been an epic race, no matter what happens right here in Marseille. There goes Van Der Poel. Tiller tries to hold the wheel, tries to come round in the final. Can we win in Marseille? No, we can't. Matthew Van Der Poel takes it, but Rasmus Tiller, what a start. Second place at the Grand Prix Marseille. And look at some of the riders we have beaten here today. That was an epic race. What a start that was, guys. Three riders, Matthew Van Der Poel, Binium Gamay and Rasmus Stiller at the front of the race. That was just absurd. Can't believe we've had such a good race to start. Obviously, it was going to be very difficult to beat Van Der Poel in that finish. So I would take that all day long. So I have just finished playing the Vuelta of San Juan. I will put a few little highlights on screen very quickly. And we did win, I think, five of the seven stages. So again, not the most exciting of races. Four of the seven stages, my mistake. But we did take home the GC as well with Torsten Train. Very good performance from him. We also got the sprints jersey as well with Nicholas Larson, who was leading out Daniel Hulagar, but he did take the jersey after winning two stages as well. But guys, in the next episode, we will have plenty of races. We have the Saudi Tour, Colombia, Almeria, and Tour de Holvar heading into Omloop Het News Lab, which will be in the following episode. So plenty of races to look forward to. We've had just a single race on camera, and I must say, I'm quickly getting to enjoy this team very much indeed. Let me know what you think of the series, guys. Drop a comment below. Let me know down there. Hit like if you enjoyed today. Hit dislike if you didn't as well. Drop a sub on the channel if you're new to never miss an episode of UnoX. Plenty more PCM21 content coming as well. And I will see you guys in the next one.